the Deputy Speaker. And it was a pleasure and intriguing to follow the member for Amber Valley. In fact, he and several members of his side of the House do seem to have some doubts about some elements of this budget. And I'm sure the Chancellor is pleased uh, that he's managed to be in the post long enough to deliver a budget, and I'm sure he's hoping that he doesn't manage to torpedo the economy like his predecessor. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is yet another Conservative government, uh, Conservative budget that's failed to invest in public services, failed to address the cost of living crisis, failed to adequately support businesses and, most of all, failed to plan for the future. Today was the chance to unlock Britain's potential. But it's just been a series of titbits which have, been pa- which have papered over the cracks of their failure after 13 years in government, their failure to really deliver consistent and green growth. In September, we saw the government deliver a mini-budget that shook our economy and delivered a huge shock to businesses and residents across my constituency. Meanwhile, we're in the middle of a mainly avoidable cost of living crisis. Real household incomes are due to fall 5.7% over the next two years, the largest fall of living standards since comparable records began. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, on businesses, over the past months I have spoken to so many businesses, locally and nationally, who are struggling or who want to grow but are being let down by government, either because of the government's incompetence or because of sky-high energy bills or delays in key decisions. Many are family-owned businesses. Uh, when I met last week, well, in a pub, uh, uh, they run a pub in Isleworth. Their previous energy contract ended in October. They have no choice but to be locked into a contract that is three times uh, the, the price. They're going to be paying three times uh, their energy costs for the next year. They're locked in a rate that could put them under. The energy bill relief scheme that ends in March will be of no help to them due to the sheer scale of the locked-in rise. And I'm not sure the draft duty extension announced today will be enough to help that pub. And when I visited businesses on Chiswick High Road, they tell me that time and time again just how broken our business rate system is. It's outdated, unfair and hammering businesses when they most need support. The Federation of Small Businesses uh, Chair uh, Martin McTague today has just posted today's budget will leave many feeling shortchanged. The government's lack of support for small firms in critical areas is glaring. And not a lot of support extra from what I could see from Make UK and the uh, British Chambers of Commerce. So that's why we need a Labour government that will support businesses and support workers and invest in public services. And between that, we will get our economy growing. Key to how government behaves towards business is collaboration, not short-termism and delay. Whenever I meet with business leaders, I hear example after example about the government's inconsistency. The ban on onshore wind turbines that's existed for more than a decade, a ban that meant UK firms were exporting wind turbines rather than building them for our own energy grid. We know the UK is falling behind in ensuring that electric vehicles and batteries are built in the UK. New plants that could provide well-paid and skilled jobs here, but the Conservatives have simply um, failed to plan or invest. Uh, the, ch- the Chief Executive of the Society of Motor Manufacturers has said after the statement today, there is little here that enables the UK to compete, compete with the massive packages of support to power a green transition that are available elsewhere, unquote. Another, uh, another key, they, and he is another key business leader who doesn't agree that the Chancellor is removing obstacles that stop business in- investing, as he promised today. And delays in confirming future standards, um, such as vehicle safety standards, mean delay in future production decisions. Of course, all this stems from this government lacking an industrial strategy and inconsistency with other policies. Where does pausing HS2 and cutting the budget for walking and cycling sit with reducing congestion on our roads and our rail networks and net zero and investing in jobs and manufacturing? The chair of the Infrastructure Commission, Sir John Armit, said said that this lack of planning, especially around HS2, is, and he said, impacting on the confidence and certainty that business needs when making investment decisions. 
Mr Deputy Speaker, whether it's a lack of housing or lab space or skills or capacity in the energy grid, it's clear that the UK lacks the basic infrastructure we need to grow our economy. Businesses want to do the right thing and want to invest in new technology and greener technology. Like the industrial laundrette or the retailer of green mopeds, both are in my constituency. They want to grow, they want to shift to greener technology but they're not, they, uh, uh, and, and, and grow their sales and grow their business, but they're not being given the tools to do so. And I see little, if anything, in today's budget that encourages them. So for many of my constituents, this budget will simply continue the pain that 13 years of Conservative governments have brought for them. Underfunded public services, low growth, rising costs. Families and businesses across my constituency are struggling, yet this budget offers them nothing new. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. There is one new thing. There's the pre-announced free childcare places for one- and two-year-olds. But I spoke in Westminster Hall a couple of weeks ago on this subject. Will these places be properly funded so that childcare settings are not going under? Will it provide places for those children who will benefit the most, those whose, pa those whose parents aren't yet getting 15 hours a week regular work, or those with disabled children? So, Mr Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, this budget does little to get this country out of the doom loop of low investment, low growth, yet high taxation.